What's up everyone? It's your boy NornRad89 here bringing you another video and it's going to be our Halloween Kills spoiler chat video. We're going to be getting down into the nitty gritty today so if you haven't seen this film, you don't want spoilers, definitely click off of this video, go watch it and then come back and check out this video. I got my beer chilling here, I've got my bullet points here written down and everything. We're going to go down, like I said, through the whole movie, kind of talking about what I did like, what I disliked and all that stuff. Spoilers, all propaganda, everything, everything's going to be talked about. So let's get into it. So Halloween Kills kicks off with a pretty, I like the title sequence. I really did enjoy the title sequence in this. This was actually, I remember saying this in my non-spoiler review, the only time I remember actually hearing the score in the film and actually feeling the ambiance. Plus I really liked the title cards, like the pumpkins and the, the logo font and all that stuff. It was very John Carpenter's Halloween, the old school style. And I said, this is the only time I remember actually hearing the score for this film. Then we get into right away Cameron finding Hawkins like you know and I was so happy with this part too because I think Hawkins being alive it was kind of unfathomable because what happened to him in the last movie but I, I like Hawkins character I didn't mind him coming back I was happy that he was still alive and I think Cameron has a really redeeming story in this film I really think Cameron makes up for being the character he was in 2018 he does a lot better in this film and like i said i do enjoy his character by the end of the movie but then after cameron finds hawkins and he's like bleeding out by the neck because he got stabbed and he's like just you know saying these things cameron's like what like i have to stop him i have to be the one to stop him he has to die tonight then we get into 1978 our flashback sequences which i think aesthetic wise the way they looked oh man it, it's top notch the aesthetics they really did capture that 1970s vibe for sure but i feel like it was a little overused in, in essence like you know just the whole 1970s thing i really think you could have trimmed like three or four minutes out of that whole section it could have been a lot tighter and it could have still got the same point across especially when we learn like you know we watched this 1978 sequence and it's just like you know when we learned some stuff later about hawkins i really don't think we needed that second flashback i think this first flashback was enough and i still think like trimming this flashback down a little bit would have made it tighter and it would have still been just as effective because i still think the aesthetic wise and the feel of it they really nailed that 70s and to see myers like actually when he's like taking the prisoner the other officer and like holding him in front of him and like hawkins doesn't know what to do like man i was like damn this is gonna be some gritty like michael myers right here and then we get our bar sequence after that this is when we meet our returning characters like tommy doyle lonnie Lindsay, like all of them coming back we also have our nurse character coming back that was with donald pleasance in that first film as well so this is when we get our bar sequence we also meet our um couple the nurse and doctor couple which i thought like their costumes being flip-flopped for their actual jobs i thought that was kind of cool it was a little kind of a little tidbitty joke i think there's some good comedy in this film that's what we want to talk about real quick is some of the comedy i think it did land it was very simple but it was the very simple comedy when they were trying too hard you can feel them trying too hard and that more natural comedy is when you really want it and stuff and like you know sometimes you're like I want to be creeped out. I want to be scared in a Halloween film. But when I watch some of the other Halloween films, I'm like, there are comical moments. You know what I mean? Maybe as a child, I might have seen it more as just very scary. But I think comedy and horror kind of goes hand in hand. You know what I mean? And like, especially like I said, in, like with Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, like those are 80s slashers that were born in that era. And like I said, I think comedy and horror, it's like it's like two sides of the same coin. But this is what I wanted to talk about. It's just this bar sequence too. Some parts of it were effective and I liked meeting the new characters. But I think Tommy Doyle, like Anthony Michael Hall, I just didn't enjoy the way his character was written in this film. Like he was the one of the big problems for me in terms of characters. Just watching Tommy Doyle, I was just like, damn, like he was the one I was like, you know, happy about coming back to and Lindsay Wallace, like all of them. And his, his character, the way it was written, like I said, the way he was acted and written out, I think that's what the problem was. You know, it was just the content that Anthony Michael Hall was given, and that's what it ended up being, and how he portrayed in the film. And I was just like, ah, I wasn't feeling Tommy Doyle. Then after his speech of, you know, the boogeyman and talking about that attack and what happened to him and Lindsay and all the other characters and stuff like that, then we flash back to him saying, you know, 
holding up the glass and he's like, you know, to Lori, wherever you are, you know, to the victims and the survivors of that attack. And then we cut to Lori, you know, in the back of the truck, you know, and them and the ambulance coming and the fire trucks and all that stuff to put the house out. Let it burn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the classic we got from the trailer. So this is just when we get that introduction. That's what James Jude Courtney, man, just coming out of this house, bro. Like, I feel like the firefighter sequence is just like that's that perfect little moment, man. And as I said, like when oh, just the look of it, the way it's designed and like you see Michael coming out of the house and the flames as he, you know, after he gets the firefighters and pulls him out and the guy like he falls through the floor and that's who's, how he's able to get out. Plus, it's kind of cool how they show you that like door that he was hiding behind that kind of protected him from the fire so he didn't like die. Like, you know what I mean? I was just, oh, man, it. Watching him come out, I was like, damn, he's a freaking badass, bro. Like, James Jude Courtney is a mean son of a bitch, and I loved it. I really did. Like, that was, like I said, easily my favorite thing about the film is the Myers performance for sure. It just it embodies so much, man. Like, you, you, when you see him, he really feels like Nick Castle in that way of being terrifying and being so simple and, like, you know, just the breathing and the way his mannerisms move. It's almost like he's a cyborg or something and, like, he's unstoppable and just, like, you know, that essence. You can really feel it. And he portrays that throughout the film. This is probably also a great time to get into the kills, man. When you're talking about the kills, like I said, they're there, man. Like, when he's doing it, Michael Myers gets all kinds of gruesome kills. Probably some of the most gruesome and best kills that he's had in all of the franchise films are in this one. Like, you can argue, like, maybe it went a little too far in terms of being a Halloween film. But we've seen Rob Zombie's Halloween. And Rob Zombie's Halloween's, they went balls to the wall you know what i mean more blood so it's it's 2021 you know halloween definitely michael myers you need more blood in this era that we live in now but man it's just it was impressive like some of these kills and the way they looked and the you know the graphics and the realism i really did enjoy a lot of the kills and that's cool because halloween kills that's the title you know they didn't mislead you the kills are definitely you know myers and the kills are definitely the best part of this movie story wise though and pacing wise is where they lose you but up until this point when I was watching the film, I was down for the ride. Up until this firefighter sequence we were going through, I was still feeling it. I was like, this is a freaking amazing movie. We're doing good. You know, let's see where this goes. You know, let's keep going. And then it's when we get to the hospital. And we get Lori Strode in the hospital again. And she's sidelined. I'm going to tell you that right now. Lori Strode, you know, I mean, even if you're here for spoilers or not, she's sidelined. She's barely in this film. But the hospital sequences is where I think it really falls apart. I think there was too much going on in there. And this film, they tried to tackle, like, I think three plots. Like, there's one main plot and then, like, two subplots. And I think it's just they tried to tackle a little too much story-wise in this film. And it wasn't the way I thought it was going to go. I expected a very balls-to-the-wall sequel we're not stopping. Michael's getting out of the house. I thought we were going to start off like the let it burn, like pretty much like right from there and get into the hospital and him fucking going through Haddonfield, tearing people up, then them having to go to freaking find him. Like I was thought the, the daughter and the mother, I mean the mother and the granddaughter character would be like, oh, we have to go get him. We have to go stop him. He's terrorizing Haddonfield still. We can't stay in this hospital. We have to go get him. Like I thought it was going to be completely different. But it's played out so much, like, you know, in this one, where the pacing is just slow. It's deliberately slow. And as I said, having these two side plots that we focus on really takes away from the main plot for me. And that was a problem. And you can feel it in the pacing. So that's part of the reason the start film started to take off. And I was like, Ugh. all right, we can get over it. We're, you know, we're not in, like, bad, bad territory right now. But let's keep going. Let's see where this goes. So... Then we continue to seeing some really other good kills. There's other good side characters in this film that I think, you know, they're funny. But I think we spend a lot, too much time on characters that we don't give a shit about. I think we really do spend too much time with characters like that. And I want to see Michael just kill them. It's kind of funny to laugh, you know. It's cool to get to know your characters. But sometimes it's cool just to see Michael Myers go into someone's house and like I don't really need to hear dialogue from them or see anything. Maybe them being scared or him suddenly grab something and they freaks them out. But I didn't really need some of it. But it is scary in essence like some of the scenes like 
when he creeps out the old man and his wife and he's like turns on the light and then michael just breaks the 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 light real quick i was like damn like he's he's coming man like he ain't stopping like say he's he's coming for you then we also get to our cops discovering the scene of michael actually being alive still like the sheriff and all that stuff and by the way the sheriff in this film what the fuck like for real the sheriff in this film he just he was the least favorite of all the sheriffs for me that we've had in any Halloween film, and especially in 2018. This one, like, he doesn't do anything, and that's what sucks is, like, we've had so many epic sheriff characters, and, like, we've even had some that, you know, fought Loomis. They questioned his motives and questioned Michael Myers and stuff, but there was still a character to get behind, and this sheriff character, I feel like he's just useless. Like, he might as well not even be in the film. And then we get the sheriff going to the hospital to tell the daughter and the granddaughter that Michael's still alive. You know, the cops, they find out from them and stuff like that. And this is when I just, I didn't agree with either Judy Greer's character keeping it from Laurie Strode about, you know, Michael being alive. Like, I kind of thought that was, like, fucked up. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't like that part. So there was, like, I mean, this is, like I said, the hospital sequences... And just the characters and the way they were handled in this middle part. The second act is really where it starts to fall apart. Like, the first act is cherry. The third act has its problems, but it's still a decent act. The second act is where this film really falls apart for me. And then we get into, like, we'll talk about it now. Like, we're just going to talk about it now because I really want to get into it. The mental patient sequence, like, chasing sequence and like finding out about him there's a second mental patient that escaped with michael myers and we go through the mob that tommy doyle basically creates he creates this mob of like evil dies tonight like oh man if you don't forget this phrase because this is like this is part of the film man evil dies tonight so oh man like the writing in this is kind of uh, it's cringy at sometimes <clears throat> but as i was saying this mental patient sequence it's just it took too long it was too long, and this is like one of those subplots that I said could have been easily taken out of the film. Like, it could have been something much more simple in terms of the, the patient. He's a different mental patient. Oh, we think it's Michael, and he lures people away from the hospital or lures people to a different part of the town, and then Michael's alone with the daughter and the granddaughter or something like that. It could have been so much simpler, but then they turn it into this a very emotional event, which I'm not lying. You know, Karen, Judy, played by Judy Greer, gets in a very powerful scene, some good moments. These are probably some of the best moments she has in the movie, and dialogue-wise and just emotional-wise and powerful-wise. And you're like, but I just didn't think it was necessary. That's why I was talking in my non-spoiler reviews. Like, there's a lot of good character moments in this film that are more emotionally potent than Halloween 2018. But... I just don't think we needed all of them in this movie. And especially after the fact that they treat the mental patient sequence a certain way and then to go and show his body like all gruesomely like on the floor and stuff like it's just there's weird tonal shifts in this movie that don't make sense. And it's like they want us to take it so serious, but then we're laughing. You want us to feel sympathetic and you want us to feel something for this character, but then you're going to show us like all these guts and bloods and like gory stuff of this character. So that that's one scene where I'm like, oh, you should have seen him jump off the building and then not seen the death at the bottom, you know, kind of thing instead of like Lonnie dying off screen. Like, what the hell was that about? But this mental patient one, like I said, this is where a, a prime example of like the writers and the creators for this film with it tonally just being this wrong shift. And they had David Gordon Green come back to do this one. So same director, same writers, him and Danny McBride. I forgot who the third person was that teamed up with them. But, oh, man, like, this is, like I said, just one of those films that it's a frustrating Halloween film. I could find enjoyment in it. I watched it twice. I saw it once in theaters with my wife, and then I watched it once on Peacock. So it's like I watched it twice. And that's when I took my billet, bullet points on the second one. And, man, there's just, like I said, it's a very frustrating movie. Like, because tonally and atmosphere-wise, there's nothing. Besides really that Lindsay Wallace scene with the park, when Lindsay and them, when they kind of break up the mob and they're going looking for Myers, and then we have, you know, the doctor and the girlfriend character and them in the van, and they find the kids at the park, and Lindsay's telling them, like, what are you guys doing here? You need to go home. Like, that sequence... 
is very powerful. And I think that sequence is the one that has the most atmosphere in it. And, you know, I just didn't feel the score throughout the film. Like, there's just, there's missing things. And for me, music is a big part of the Halloween films because that's the driving force. As I said in my non-spoiler review, it really is. It's just the driving force of the Halloween films. It sets the mood. It makes it more creepy. And then you add that Michael Myers, just you never know where he's going to be, but he could be anywhere. He could be right next door. He could be across the street. He could be watching you right now. And it's that presence you want to feel throughout the film. And I didn't feel that in this film. Like I felt like there was some times where we were completely away from Lori and we were completely away from Michael. And we were like with all these other characters that I said we don't give a shit about. And I'm like, damn, man, like <clears throat> I that was like I said, my problem is like when I viewed it, I was like, if somebody if you weren't a ho- hardcore Halloween fan, I think you'll have much more fun with this. But Halloween franchise, like, I'm not a hardcore fan. It's not my favorite favorite, but it's in my top five favorite horror franchises. But it's just like I said, this one's very frustrating for me. So that's why I was like, ah, oh, man, my, my feelings coming out of the theaters of this one and then my feelings watching it on Peacock, it was just, there was areas where I was like, dang, this is so good in so many parts. But then I was like, once we hit that second act, that's where it really does start to fall apart. And I feel like story-wise, that first film is much more better written. The dialogue in this one is much more cringy. We have a brutal Michael Myers and some awesome kills. And like I said, it looks good. Like the cinematography is pretty good, but this film is choppy edited. So that's kind of a problem is it looks really good, but the editing is kind of messed up. So that's why I landed at that like 6.5 range when I was rating this one. I'm going to be popping out my ranking too pretty soon for all the Halloween films. So we'll see where it lands. I've been kind of going over and like writing them down and like really looking at the list and like do I like this? Am I comfortable with this one? Like, you know, the kind of thing, but you guys will find out soon and stuff like that. And also I have a link in, or in the card in the top corner for my other reviews and stuff like that and playlists for the Halloween film. So you can go check that out. But, oh man, like that's why I was like Halloween kills. I thoroughly had a good time in theaters because it was like this date with my wife and I loved it. And we were both Michael Myers fans. That's her favorite franchise, but it's very rare that we agree on our Michael Myers films and for us to come out of the Michael Myers film thinking the same thing that you know oh we like the kills and we like the Myers performance but we felt story wise and like pacing wise that it was completely off so for us to feel the same way I think this film like I said it is a very lackluster film like it's underwhelming I expected a lot more for me especially because after Halloween 2018 it was such a good film to me i really did like halloween 2018 and the way they were going the way it was set to go i was like this might be one of the best timelines in the halloween franchise maybe not my favorite but it might be one of the best that's how i felt after 2018 but now after seeing halloween kills i'm like damn they're gonna have a lot of pieces to pick up let's see what happens you know and as i said we get into that third act and the way it's edited the way it's paced it just it's jarring i got confused especially after karen leads michael away from the house with his mask and then he gets jumped by all the people from the town and then we suddenly cut to her sitting outside the house i feel like that's what i mean i feel like there's stuff missing in this film that we didn't get to see and then it's cut with like you know this slow motion and then people talking and then jump to this scene and then jump and cut to that scene so it just it doesn't like i said it doesn't have a feeling to it or an atmosphere it's cut in this weird way that it takes away from building atmosphere and as i said it confuses me more than anything else so that's what's kind of frustrating as i said those things about the film but as i said there are things i do like about this film that i did enjoy but in terms of being the ranking like we'll see where this lands this is definitely probably going to be lower tier or middle ground in terms of the ranking where it is you know what i mean this isn't going to be breaking my top five or anything like that so thanks for sticking around with me all for this spoiler chat of halloween kills i hope you guys enjoyed this you know just wanted to you know crack open beer chill out talk some spoilers really dive deep into this movie kind of get into it because like i said i didn't hate this movie but i don't love it it's just very middle ground and wanted to get into my things of really talking about it also 
Oh, I have to mention this now that I just thought of it. Robert Longstreet as Lonnie. That dude is amazing. I really like Robert Longstreet. He's a great actor. He's also in uh, Midnight Mass, that that TV show. In that TV show, his character, there's a certain scene in that show. I cried. I was bawling. So he, he's a good actor. And I really did like his portrayal of Lonnie in this film. So, you know, thanks for sticking around with me, y'all. Oh, I had to get that little last part in there for the spoiler chat of Halloween Kills. Let me know in the comments section what you all thought of the film did you really enjoy it did you hate it or are you middle ground what were your favorite parts you know what did you least like about it i would love to hear from all of you and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing i'm going to be having my halloween franchise ranking coming up soon all 12 films ranked my from worst to best in my opinion so stay tuned to the channel and have a safe and happy day everyone peace out